Most robots in novel and unfamiliar environments depend on human experts to operate. This includes robots used for ocean exploration, space exploration, and search and rescue. Most of these applications require the expert to tell the robot where to go. The expert usually gives the robot some pre-planned route because they don't know in advance where the most interesting observations will be, and they usually don't have the time or communications bandwidth to be able to monitor the robot constantly. Unfortunately, pre-planned routes are usually very inefficient. Looking at this robot, for example, despite there being many interesting phenomena in its environment, it spends over half its trajectory just looking at sand. Wouldn't it be great if the robot could adaptively change its trajectory in order to collect as many valuable observations as possible? This is actually a well-studied problem in robotics when collecting low-dimensional observations like temperatures, but not when collecting high-dimensional observations like images. Our first contribution is a general-purpose approach to using human-robot cooperation to enable adaptive planning based on visual observations. So what does the robot need in order to be able to use an adaptive planning system? First, it needs to know which types of observations are valuable and which aren't. This is called a reward model. Second, it needs to know where to find more observations like the one it already has. This is called a spatial observation model. Building these models is difficult because there are so many things the robot might see, and it can't possibly be trained in advance to correctly recognize everything it might find in a new environment. To solve this problem, we use spatiotemporal topic models, which excel at inventing labels for things they have never seen before. They group similar images together by learning a few representative topics to describe them, which we visualize using colors. Here's an example of how a real image of a coral reef might be represented using a few different topics. The robot still needs to build a reward model, which is challenging because some new topics will be worth looking into more closely, but not everything new is relevant. A boot, for example, may be uninteresting in an ocean exploration mission, but a very important find in a search and rescue operation. The expert can't teach the robot in advance about everything it might see in the mission. So instead, the robot needs to learn the reward model online. The only way the robot can learn which topics are interesting is by sending a representative example to the expert and asking whether it's relevant. But experts are often very busy, and the robot may be in a very remote location or one with very limited communications bandwidth. So it must choose what to ask wisely. In addition to the reward model, the robot must learn a spatial observation model that it can use to predict where to find more of each type of observation. Topics are highly spatially correlated. If you make an observation of a fire coral topic, it's highly likely there will be more fire coral nearby, as well as other coral topics. Spatiotemporal topic models learn and use these correlations to build semantic maps, like the ones we see here. The robot can extrapolate from these maps to predict what it will find in new locations. Putting everything so far together, we developed an approach for cooperative human-robot exploration of highly remote environments. The robot learns a topic model-based spatial observation model to classify different types of observations and predict what it will find in new locations. By sending examples of past observations to the expert and asking which ones are interesting, the robot learns a reward model and can then adaptively plan highly interesting trajectories. We used simulations of a scientific ocean exploration task to demonstrate our approach. In the center, we see a topic map based on a map of a real coral reef. The dark yellow square is a simulated robot, and the faded yellow line is its current planned trajectory. Along the robot's path, red pixels represent visited locations with uninteresting observations, and blue pixels represent visited locations that were interesting. However, the robot is not given this information. Instead, every 10 time steps, the robot can send an observation to the simulated scientist, who responds by saying whether it was interesting. When the robot receives this label, the corresponding pixel is highlighted bright blue if it was interesting, and bright orange if it was not. To the top right is a randomly generated interest profile that shows which topics the simulated scientist is most interested in. And in the top left, there's an interest map that shows where all the interesting observations are. Below these are the robot's corresponding predictions, based on the topic map and the observations it has received labels for so far. Each simulation lasted for 300 time steps. Our next contribution was in helping the robot decide what to ask, which is an active learning problem. We compared different active learning criteria 
based on the amount of reward they helped the robot to collect in the simulations we just saw, as well as by how accurately they helped the robot to learn the scientist's reward model. To visualize the different active learning approaches, let's consider an underwater robotic explorer choosing which images to send back to the scientist leading its mission. And suppose that due to bandwidth constraints, it can only send back one in every 10 observations. As a baseline, let's see the amount of reward collected by following a pre-planned lawnmower trajectory like this one. The x-axis values are different communication bandwidths. So a 20, for example, means that the robot can only send back one in every 20 observations. The y-axis values are average reward collected per a time step, so higher is better. The first active learning approach is random selection, which would just have the robot send the expert random images. While this might seem inefficient, it does have the favorable property that the distribution of images labeled will match the distribution of phenomena encountered. This basic technique already enables the robot to collect vastly more interesting observations than the lawnmower pattern, demonstrating the value of our first contribution in areas like scientific exploration. We evaluate how well the robot learned the scientist's reward model by checking the accuracy with which the robot can predict the true interest map by the end of the mission. We measure this using negative log loss, for which higher is better. The next approach is uniform selection, which has the robot always try to send back the most recent image that it took. This gives the expert the most up-to-date picture possible of what the robot is doing. Looking at the results, this approach collects much more reward per time step than asking random queries. The exceptions are when the bandwidth is very high, thus allowing the robot to get almost every observation labeled, or so low that hardly any observations get labeled regardless of the approach. The third approach, and the focus of most prior research, is to use an information gain technique. This would have the robot send back the image which it is most uncertain about for labeling. For example, based on the robot's current observations, most information theoretic algorithms would be about equally likely to send an image of crabs or the corals, because the robot does not have any labels for either. Perhaps surprisingly, the information gain approach doesn't perform any better than uniform selection at collecting reward. It's apparent that knowing whether the most recent observation is interesting can be at least as important to finding a good path as knowing the scientist's true reward model. Regardless, the information gain approach outperforms the other methods when measuring the accuracy of the interest map, because error in the map is very closely related to uncertainty in the reward model. Our final contribution is a novel regret-based active learning criterion. Regret represents how much additional reward a robot could gain by having access to some unknown information. At this point, the robot has no idea how interesting corals are or how interesting crabs are. But based on its current location, a regret-based method would prefer to get a label for an image of the crabs. Why? If the robot wrongly assumes that crabs aren't interesting to the scientist, it might be throwing away a very rare and valuable opportunity to observe a unique phenomenon. On the other hand, if it wrongly assumes that they are interesting, the scientist may be annoyed to find that his robot got distracted by a bunch of crabs. This means the robot might really regret not asking the scientist about crabs. On the other hand, the robot does not have much regret for not asking the scientist about corals at this point in time. We see that at most bandwidth levels, this novel regret heuristic helps the robot to collect more reward than any of the other approaches. This is because it combines the best parts of the information theoretic and uniform selection approaches by asking questions for which the answer is both highly uncertain and relevant. Interestingly, however, the regret-based method does not do very well in terms of predicting the entire interest map. This is because it prioritizes asking for immediately useful information to choosing a good trajectory rather than trying to build a generalizable reward model. To wrap up, we've presented a general purpose approach to co-robotic vision-based exploration that wisely uses a limited communication budget to learn what's important online. We then demonstrated a novel active reward learning criterion, which outperformed the other criteria we tested. In doing so, we revealed an important difference between traditional active learning and online active learning, where a typical information theoretic approach may not perform as well as expected. In future work, we look forward to demonstrating the system in action for real-world oceanic exploration and other applications.